Hello, Initiate. Recently, Abstergo Historical Research began several new projects in London. We both know that when Abstergo makes big moves, the Templars are up to something. We think they're hot on the trail of a new piece of Eden. I've got people in London looking for it. Hey, Bishop! Jacob and Evie Fry are twins. How awesome is that? Speak of the devil. Fire up your cameras, Bex. I've got picture. ETA on the payload. Sending it now. A lot to sift through. I'm gonna get the initiates on it ASAP. You look weird with a weapon. Let's plant a little bug and see what we can see. Got something. Isabel Ardant has a meeting here in a few hours. Uh, doesn't say with who. Doesn't say with whom, Rebecca. I suppose it's down to Muggins here to find out. Hold on. The mission was to find data to locate a piece of Eden in London. We did. And now I am eager to try this new kit. I don't like it when those two go off book like this. Well, all we can do is take a deep breath and move forward. You'll be searching for the piece of Eden through the lives of Jacob and Evie Fry, twin assassins who operated in Victorian London. Your first set of genetic memories are downloaded. Good luck. Brother George, it is as I feared. London has fallen. Thrice I have written to you, begging your aid. Thrice you've responded with silence. And yet I write again. So desperate my need, so few my options. I need you. London needs you. You would say it is too great of a task, or that it is not yet time to strike. Patience, you would counsel. But whilst you wait, the Templars consolidate their power. They have chosen a Grand Master so ruthless, so thorough, one might think Reginald Birch himself had returned. His name is Crawford Starrick, and he intends to rule the world. There is no aspect of society he does not control, no industry that escapes his grim touch. By day, it is corrupt merchants and venal politicians who hold court. Come night, a vicious street gang known as the Blighters strikes terror in the hearts of all. There is no business untainted by his poison. No person unexploited, be it by duplicity or force. Our enemy has designs on the highest office of them all. And so, as you look inward, and dare I say it, afraid, Crawford Starrick's ambition is fixed on the beyond, to kingdoms and continents as yet unconquered, though not for long, for he knows. As I have warned you, time and time again, whosoever controls London, controls the world. The iron ships from here. The Templar running things is Rupert Ferris and our target one. Target two is Sir David Brewster, who's got his hands on a bauble that could ruin us in this wretched war. Think you both can handle it? What a question. All oh, right, my mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Fry twins. See them nightly at Covent Garden. George, honestly, I've studied the plans of the laboratory and have every route covered. And I've got all I need right here. I'll extend your regards to Ferris. Chat later, George. We have a train to catch. Jacob! Evie! May the creed guide you, you vagrants! Poor man. More afraid than ever. Years have not been kind. E.B. Fry, where do you get it from? The same place as you, Jacob. Have fun. 
don't die. Send me some laudanum for my head. Coming right up. in or out, lest there's a problem. I hold the machines. That door opens, and I have my route to Ferris. Sanitary inspector. This man is dead. You're the dead man! Run along home. I'll teach you how to beg for mercy. Well done! Knock off! Maybe you'll settle down, but I'll rip your guts out. 
Mr. Ferris, sir, the, uh, the lad in the factory should be taken to be bandaged by the apothecary. Fine, but dock his wages. Yes, sir. Shall we arrive at a final price, Mr. Ferris? It is done. Oh? 
What did you accomplish, boy? A bolt loosened in Starek's machine. A large bolt, but not enough. Your Grandmaster will fall. You assassins can circle London to your heart's content. The mechanism we have built has been going strong for a hundred years, and will run a thousand more. It is the very city itself. We will take London from your hands. From Croydon? You lurk in the shadows like a coward. I doubt it. We seem to have made an unscheduled stop. next time I'll walk. Yard, guard quarters, Bruce's laboratory, 
This is where the piece of Eden will be located. No loose ends. Now, to decouple the locomotive and create a diversion. Well, where is it? Huh? Where's Brewster's supplies? Meter. Deploy the diversion. like Jacob's cooking. That should keep you busy while I head into your lab. Me down the tracks. You stay here and keep a look at. All right. I'll shout if I get any bother. First for a bird's eye view. Can't be too careful. I'm gonna come apart. Not your concern. We bang the car I need two more weeks with the device. Your questionable practices are beginning to draw unwanted attention. You have been given more than enough time to achieve results, Sir David. I was unaware that you expected me to perform like a cocker spaniel. Permit me to remind you of your obligation to the Order. Miss Thorne, you ride me like a racehorse. Sir David, I will return tomorrow. If you have not unlocked the device's secrets, forget your dogs and horses. I will leave you to the wolves. Good day. I was merely promised a tour of the premises, my lords. Who sent you? It's one of green spies. Get that man to interrogation. Then I want him brought to the lab. What a pity. But no deviations from the mission. Yeah! <laughs> 
Nearly there. Where is Brewster's laboratory? All reconnaissance pointed straight here. I can aid this interrogation. Show me what you got! Mother said this very week when I went to the fight. But she always turns a blind eye when I come home with the earnings. You can bet your last shilling. Confess! Oh my now we're talking. <laughs> ah. Thank you kindly. I was in ever such a squeaky fix when what do you know? You rescue me. Where's the hidden laboratory? Untie me and then we can parlay, my lady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. It's underground. Requires a key. One of the guards nicked mine, cheeky sod. Thank you. Uh, now? Untie me? You got yourself in? I trust you can get yourself out again. Not to worry, my lady. Can still recall a couple of tricks from me carnival days. Charming. <laughs> it ain't worth it.
There you are. The entrance to Bruce's lab. So do as you're bloody told. And by the way, it's sir to you. The blokes are nice. of Eden. Increase the electricity. But it'll become unstable, sir. You heard what Miss Thorne said. We need results now. Unlock the artifact secrets of 
Time to lay down your head, Sir David Brewster. But I have so much more to discover. Do not be afraid. I'm not. God will protect me. I will continue your experiment. You will not stop, Staric. Miss Thorne has already found another piece of Eden, more powerful than the last. I will take that one too. We fight to gain what we cannot take with us. It's in our nature. I must find a way out. Was that explosion? What explosion? EV. Piece of Eden detonated and took the lab with it. The magic lump of hyperbolic metal. I'm shocked. Simply because you have never valued the pieces does not All mean... went according to plan, hmm? <clears throat> there was a slight complication. How slight? The lab exploded. Jacob. You derailed a train. Oh, he did. Did he? Well, the train derailed and I happened to be on it. I killed my target. Brewster is also no more. Then all in all, a successful mission in spite of you two. What about London? What about it? We're wasting our time out here. You know as well as I do that London has been the domain of the Templars for the last hundred years. They are far too strong yet. Patience. But the Templars have found a new piece of Eden. Sir David is dead. They do not know how to use it. The Council shall guide us. Sound advice that your father would have seconded. I shall see you back in Crawley. Patience, Evie. Ah, oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. So what's stopping us? London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, Father. 
you could continue his legacy in London. Freeing future generations from a city ruled by Templars. You know, Jacob Fry, you might just be right. Then shall we? Yes. Let's. Onward to London. I know, I know. You've only had a taste of our latest acquisition from Abstergo. But I want to check in on Sean and Rebecca. I still think attacking a Templar is a mistake. Call Dr. Grammatica. <clears throat> Come on. Who oh, is Appel? What a lovely surprise. Our mutual friends will be here shortly to search for the artifact. Once it's located, I'll let you know. Super. Always a pleasure. Prick. It's people like you that give historians a bad name. I'm afraid I don't have time for you today, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for making my job easy. Oh, shit. It does look grim. Masterberg, Agent Acosta. Deal with them, please. Move it! <coughs> Hunt them down! <coughs> All they had to do was wait for you to search the data. Their little stunt has put the whole operation at risk. You need to synchronize Jacob and Evie's memories. Find something that puts us ahead of the enemy. Time is of the essence, and lives are now clearly on the line. Good luck. I've never seen so many people all at once. <laughs> the churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Who's Mr. Green again? The assassin watching over London. Did you not listen the first three times? Listen to what? <laughs> Oi, watch it. Ben pardon, sir. Oi! Come back here, you filthy Jacob, dipper! Stop! Fine, you little mobsman. Keep it. Well, well. What do we have here? You're on our property. You're right, you. you a different tune when I'm through with you. Finish him off. <laughs> Excellent. What else does London have to offer? Now is not the time for tourism, Jacob. Now's the time to find Henry Green. I've always been the quicker climber, haven't I? Not since we were two. Race you to the highest vantage point. You're going to lose again. Not on my watch.
Where is Mr. Green's shop located? It was marked on Father's map. Two assassins. Equal in height, one female, one male. Two decades old, and those devilish smiles. You must be the Fry Twins. And you are? Henry Green, at your service. I was sorry to learn about your father's passing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Crawford Starrick? I suppose the Council desires news. London must be freed to provide a better future for all of its citizens. Well, thank goodness the Council saw reason and sent you to aid us. Yes. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Today, Starrick sits at the helm of the most sophisticated Templar infrastructure known in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries. His reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. Firm, but fair. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. We can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those card players at the Oakbrook Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. You were never good at chess either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? The best way to see any landscape is from above. Look at what Starrick has done to the city. Whitechapel is riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets, and Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. We will free London from Starrick. You have my word. And my rooks. Miss Fry. Your passion is inspiring. Come, let us return to my shop and I can bring you up to date on the rest. One of Starrick's gang leaders. Why does he want you? He's after some of my more arcane research into one of the precursor artifacts. The Peace of Eden. So tell me about these blighters. In search of an army, Starrick gathered up the nastiest of the underworld. Some of the city's gangs tried to prevent it and were slaughtered for their efforts. Now, only Whitechapel's clinkers remain opposed, but they're no match for the blighters. Well, let's shine these clinkers up then, shall we? They're just the sort we're looking for. You can't be serious. Evie, they're ready to fight and oppose the Blighters. This is my chance to step in. Look out, London. Here come the Rooks. <laughs> Confound this city. No one looks where they're going. Yes, I've noticed that. Bloody drood. I'll never finish it at this rate. Only Providence knows where those words are headed now. Well, I must get to work replacing them. Should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two, you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot. Ta-ta! What an odd man. That Mr. Fry was Charles Dickens. Knows everyone and everything in the city. 
If I were you, I would keep that connection in your back pocket. <clears throat> Kaylock's gang is nearby. They must not follow me back to my shop. We'll take care of it. Here. You might be able to use this. Oh, God, I hope so. My carriage is nearby. Make use of it to tow them off my trail. I will meet you at the curio shop. Let's go. We need to lead them away from Green. Here comes trouble. Their carriages are easily damaged. Kalos will rule the day. They've gone. Now to return to Mr. Green. Aye, aye, Captain. You're relentless. That relentlessness will see me become master when we finish this. George would do nothing of the sort. Whatever's left of the Creed would perish under your control. Harsh words, dear sister. I do hope Mr. Green made it back safely. Don't tell me you fancy the bloke already. And what do you suggest we do if our number one source of information turns up dead? Starry can't be that hard to find. I say we turn the carriage round and go find him. This is why you aren't in charge. Give them the slip. We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <sighs> we take over Starek's gangs, we cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starek has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the Rooks. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. We will need the police to turn a blind eye to activities. My ally in the force, Sergeant Aveline. I've heard he's a master of disguise. Next up, urchins. 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 Children make for excellent spies. Clara O'Day. Smart as a whip, that one. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Starek never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. Rexford Kaylock, known for his ability to vanish before your very eyes. Should we make him vanish for real? I suppose. One moment. Um, a Templar target you might want to look into. Uh, be cautious. It's rough out there. No, don't worry about me, Greeny. I can handle a few thugs. What's the plan, then, oh mighty planner? You're the one with the grand ideas. The gangs, the fights, even the outfits you'll wear. Perhaps you should lead the way. If you insist. I don't see Mr. Aberline. Well, we tried. I may know a thing or two about that splendid fellow you're talking about. What's this? God's sake! Are you trying to blow the gaff? What? Sergeant Aberline, at your service. 
I presume you're the Fry Twins Green mentioned. I was expecting you to be a policeman. I was expecting you to be discreet. Henry Green said that you could help us go unnoticed. This is how it will work. I will give you the names of criminal gang members. You will bring them back to me. Quietly. Oh, we'll be as quiet as an old lady. A very hairy, strange old lady that looks a lot like a policeman. Now, whatever you do, try to remain within the bounds of the law. For my sake. I don't need any corpses at the station. Approach the target from behind. Your gob. Meet my blade. What is it that you think I've done? Collecting rent from people who don't owe you a shit. <laughs> You could get away with that, did you? Oh, for God's sake! Silence, and I might let you live. Should I be concerned? The devil is going on over there. On you go now. How am I going to explain this back at the station? I'm coming 
to deal with you. Put you down. Lick him. I made a huge mistake. It's mine. Why don't I come up? Must be one of the clinkers. Good place to start. Must be one of the clinkers. Good place to start. How's everything, sir? You seem to want my employer's attention, Mr. Fry. Oh, I positively crave it. But you'll do for now. As you like. Business. 
some sort of commotion. Oi! Where's your bloody manners? Cheeky sock. How <laughs> hurry are we? Hey! One day I'll be What is this place? It's nice to meet you both at last. This is Babylon Alley. Here we make it our business to know the streets and provide children with the opportunity to control their own destinies. Clara, Mr. Green said we might be able to help one another. In exchange for our services, we ask a small favor. Well, why not? You seem to have taken most of my money. Why not take a small favor too? There are several factories about the city that are powered almost entirely by child labor. Those children work long hours with little pay, and most are not permitted even to leave the factory grounds. They suffer terribly. I need you to save them. A small favor. In return, we offer you intelligence, something you clearly need. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm late for an appointment. What are these terms? We accept. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. Helping you out. Thanks, Mr. Fry. Keep your voice down. Thank you, sir.
Ah, there you are. All that stands between you and Whitechapel is the villain controlling the borough. Kaylock has demanded you settle the claim for territory in a gang fight. His loss? Yeah. I'm sure you can put this to better use than I can. Oh, what's this, Greeny? Assassin Christmas. Hmm. Gather your allies. No, Kalok. Hmm. No matter. Attack! Appears to be broken. Oh well, at least we have a train now. It's not all bad. of the blighters you now have the chance to join our ranks we welcome all who would stand up to steric and his cutthroats I'd rather throw myself to the tracks than run Bertha another mile for that doughty bow by. Kaylock? <laughs> He's left the station. Mel! Hello, fancy pants. How do you make you? I'm Evie be... Fry, and this is my brother, Jacob Fry. Pleased to meet you. I'm Agnes McBean. A delight. I thought I was getting a promotion. I suppose I'm out of work now. Come work for us instead. <laughs> I won't bail your heat. You pay better than scraps? Oh, I'm sure we can at least match that. <laughs> then may I present to you Agnes and Bertha, lady and locomotive, at your service. I'll be in the next car. A hideout on the rails? What an excellent idea. Yes, it all worked out rather well. Now, I would like to follow up a lead on... Jacob? This is serious? I'm not doing anything until this gets fixed. 
I believe I know someone who can help with that. I knew you would, Greeny. You know, a mite of money goes a mickle bit in this city. Think of the power of good you can do with the purse you bring. You talk of a store in London. Well, now's your chance. That there map shows who to speak to. Old friends, if you will. Ema with that sterling, and maybe you can save us all from having to lay down our knife and fork afore we're ready. Them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Starrick's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine. Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um... Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favor to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. <laughs> I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Static will be weakened. Only we are somewhat at a handicap. And there. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. <laughs> Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage, if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. Miss Fry, I am so glad you could assist me. Oh, please, please, please. I Come on. So, Mr. Bell, what inventions are you concocting? I intend to develop a phonetic telegraph that does not just convey dots and dashes, Miss Fry, but a human voice. A phonetic telegraph? Hmm. Sounds a bit of a mouthful. You could just call it a telephone. Telephone? How bizarre. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, the press has become entirely dependent on the Static Telegraph Company. Which is why Mr. Green has asked you to set up a free line. Yes. What is more, other small independent companies have Easy their now. lines sabotaged. And they have little means of finding any broken fuses, which are... To be found on top of Big Ben. Correct. Especially as one needs Gotta a special go. government pass to get through the guards. They will not be a problem. I'll repair the fuses. Huh? <gasps> 
Lovely view. All set. That should do it. Thank you very much, Miss Fry. I will now be able to continue with the installation of the new line. If there's anything else I can do to help... But, certainly. Please do come and visit. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It, it's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works.
That's it. any man with news, even the top knobs. And how'd you work that out? Take Mr. Gladstone. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> Miss Fry, uh, I was just showing Jacob the first message was received via the mended lines. Oh, uh, you can keep the rope launcher, by the way. Um, we've managed to procure another one for your brother. Excellent work. Thank you again. You're very welcome, Mr. Bell. We can now defend the principle of impartial news and free speech. Free is fair, but free and brief is far better. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Fry, such caustic wit. <laughs> And on that note, we must depart. <laughs> oh, uh, good fortune to you both. Uh, call on me at uh, any time. Now that we've finished with that distraction... Who is that? Oh, you mean you don't know? Beautiful train you got here. Miss McBean was just telling me all about her. Name's Ned. How do you do? I won't take up more of your time. Uh, if you want to learn a thing or two about the finest transit systems in the world, you can find me at this address. Let us return to locating the Peace of Eden. We need to reclaim London from Staric. Who are my targets? It's not time for that yet. I didn't come to London to hunt Cheerios. First understand the dance, only then become the dancer. Oh, 
Whoa. So you're taking over where father left off? Someone has to. Evie, finding the precursor artifact will give us an insight into what the Templars intend. Jacob, I have information about Starek's associates that should be of use to you. Here. This soothing syrup has become the only medicine available in Lambeth. It bears the Templar Grandmaster's name. About time for a visit to the doctor. I don't see that cure arriving anytime soon. And what exactly will you be doing, might I ask? You know very well. Tracking down the Peace of Eden. Enjoy your studies. I'll be out killing Templars. Sometimes I find life in this city rather hectic. Ah, another exciting night home for Evie Fry. Just on my way out, actually. I found the piece of Eden. What's this one going to do, hmm? Heal the sick, deflect bullets, control the populace? They're dangerous objects, Jacob, especially in Templar hands. Oh, you sound exactly like father. If only. Lucy Thorne is expecting a shipment tonight. She's Starek's expert in the occult. I'm nearly certain she is receiving the piece of Eden Sir David Brewster mentioned. Sounds like fun. Mind if I join you? Promise you will stick to the mission. I swear. The contents of that box are worth more than your life and those of your entire family. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Thorne. Uh, careful there. And double the guard on that cart. Now, Miss Thorne, there's the matter of some uh, papers for Mr. Starek. If you'll just come this way. Very well, but make it quick. Whatever it is she's after, it's in that chest. There are gunmen on the rooftops. Can you dispose of them before I reach the cart? I was hoping for a challenge.
sight. Ready for fire? <laughs> There he is! I think it's best we leave. What did you do? It's hardly the time for questions! Whoa! Come on! That's more trouble coming. Oh. Would you drive a little more carefully? You're endangering the document! Oh! Poor documents! Perhaps you'd rather I just stop right here! the invitation. Let's do it again. Damn it. the train for you. Like a paint, new rugs from Camden Loch, and my wee sister, the seamstress, did a discount on the curtains.
You may have not found a piece of Eden, but this material is invaluable. Look. It says the London assassins had found a shroud. The Shroud of Eden is supposed to heal even the gravest injury. If the assassins had found something like this, surely Father would have known. There must be something we're missing. Something only we can see. These look like directions. Are you coming? Fieldwork is not really my speciality. We found a clue to a precursor object. Don't you want to follow it? Put that way, one can hardly refuse. You know, I think this map may be taking us to the Kenway Mansion. Kenway? The pirate. Master assassin and pirate, yes. How much do you know about the Shroud of Eden? It's said to heal the sick. Popular myth is that it brings people back from the dead, but the assassin records say that's not true. I've never heard of one being in London. Do you really think Edward Kenway could have found one? He traveled extensively, so it's possible. But if he did, he kept it a closely guarded secret. But if it's true, what a find it would be. Indeed. I'm eager to find out myself. It's surprising that you haven't already searched the Kenway house. Edward's son, Haven, joined the Templars. When he died, the house passed on to Haven's sister. And in all your time in London, you didn't go and have a look around? weren't even a little curious. Here now. I think this is it. I think you're right. Look. I'll be in the study. I don't want to be interrupted unless you have news of the lost notebook. That makes getting in a challenge. You still intend to enter? If this is a Templar stronghold, it won't get any easier. But don't worry. We'll stay well away from Miss Lucy. Shall we? Can you check over there? Of course. I feel like I'm being watched. This, this is a waste of...
What are we looking for? I'm not quite sure. Not enormously subtle, is it? Clearly, Kenway had a strong sense of spectacle. of the London Assassins. Vault holes, vaults, a hidden key. This is it. You say you heard music. There was no opening there before. It's closing! Yes, I can see that. Help me block it. We need to find another way out. An entire vault, filled with assassin history, left behind once again. We'll just have to reclaim this one later, or find a better cachet. We? Oui. I thought you preferred to stay out of field work. I... I was thinking more of you and your brother. I, I shall provide uh, planning assistance from the train. Jacob's off marauding. There is a vacancy. Should you desire to broaden your horizons? Oh, well, Evie, I... Oh, well, Evie, I will think on it. You do that. Come, let's get above ground. Thank you. 
Jacob, uh, Miss uh, Fry, how good to see you. Oh, have you seen Starlick's latest lies? Lies in a newspaper? What transpired from the new line you're establishing? Oh, the cables we ordered never arrived. And then we intercepted this. A message mentioning cargo seized at College Wharf. Then let's unseize it. Oh, uh, wait. Another intercepted wire contained the recipe for a powerful hallucinogenic serum. I've adapted this dart mechanism to work with your braces. Alec, you're a genius. Well, that patently is untrue. Although I've also discovered that the serum adopts a form of a gas when subjected to heat. Just when I think you can't surpass yourself. to me, Thomas.
She ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Bell will find this most interesting. there, Mr. Bell. Every worthwhile endeavor is fraught with dangers, my dear friends. None more so than yours. But you have triumphed once again. How do you know? We have entered the age of communication, remember? We've already received word from Greenwich that the shipment has arrived safely, thanks to you. Have you discovered what else is in that shipment? Indeed. Um, I'm afraid that Starrick's poison has found its way onto the open market. If he believes that will stop us, he is mistaken. I am trying to make my living. Get Starek soothing syrup right here. It's all he drinks. Your syrup is liquefying him. He's turning himself all headed. Now look now. You are scaring away my customers. Why don't you bugger off or I'll give you something to remember me by. You can't talk to me like that, you little guttling. What's all this then? Oh, sod off. <gasps> if you'll excuse me, madam. Oh, 
Be sorry for that. Tell me where the syrup originates. Come on, all, all I know is they make a run each day between the gasometers and the asylum. where that syrup is made, shall we? The man in charge of the syrup distribution runs a fighting club at the foundry.
or forever hold your... The distillery. It's the large building beside the brewery. Now, to stop soothing syrup production once and for all. Steady on. Keep a sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. This will complicate things.
You should not go about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemanly. Snooping? Sir, I assure you. Keep vigilant. Quick, inside. That was too close a call. You young man gave me quite a fright. I thought you were one of them. But I realize now why you're here. The same reason I am, I imagine. I imagine? You should see this. Rather impressive contraption, wouldn't you say? I've seen bigger. Stramonium, or devil snare as it is commonly called, that goes into the syrup and opium, no less. Revolting, absolutely sickening. A favorable way to proceed, wouldn't you agree? Find a way out of here, quickly! What about the other valves? Take a wild guess. Very well, young men. How much do they sell this panacea for, anyway? Stop that! Oh, trespassing!
Well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Oh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Mm -hmm. Where's the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I say. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive. Yeah. Uh, uh. That is Richard Owen. A vile, despicable wretch of a man. Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Faster, you netwit! Faster! Hurry up, Mr. Fry, or you'll lose him! You're doing fine, girl. much of a beating this type of vehicle could take. Questions for you, sir. Whatever it is, Darwin Bob, I will not give in.
barbaric soothing syrup. Soothing syrup? Why would a scientist have any interest in panaceas? I wager your life, Mr. Owen, that you know something. Stop! I'm telling you, I do not know a thing. Next stop, the River Thames. Better speak now, old man. Stop! For pity's sake, stop, or I would tell you everything I know. <laughs> Dr. Elliotson, Dr. John Elliotson, he formulated the elixir, he's the man you want, not me, I beg you good sir, stop this madness. Now, was that so hard? Yes. Doing fine, girl. I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes. We had the most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson. I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me.
Where would I find the doctor? As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Linson. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. How to do it. At last it ends. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. 
forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> Do you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford's Starrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. I hear a child. A child who believes it can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? Elliot's an expired, and soothing syrup production has ceased. Outrageous! Fry intends to endanger all of London at the hands of the mob. Or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all. Thank but you. simply content to dice with our lives. The asylum is shut up. Medical care throughout the city is in disarray. He does not, cannot understand the consequences of his actions. The man is clearly an anarchist! Gentlemen. This tea was brought to me from India, by a ship, and up from the harbor to a factory, where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door, unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me. All by men and women who work for me, who are indebted to me, Crawford Starrick, for their jobs, the time, the very lives they lead. They will work in my factories, and so too shall their children. And you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry, this insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin? You disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this, this miracle, this tea. I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of this sister I've heard of? Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt in a shit. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Otzelberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time. Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. 
I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. Owning the railway wasn't enough. Now Starek has bought an omnibus company as well. I suppose he wants to control the neighborhood's workers and keep them under his thumb. Pearl Attaway is Starek's competitor, is she? Perhaps it's time I went into business. And Miss Fry, what are your plans? I studied the history we recovered from the Kenway Mansion's hidden room. I'm off to a certain monument. Miss Attaway. Yes, may I? Oh. Splendid. You're here to murder me. I what? No matter. Everyone has a prize. Is this enough? I'm not here to kill you. And what's your game? Mr. Starrick and the Milner Company have blocked your ambitions long enough. I have a business proposition for you. Wonderful. Come with me. We have much to discuss, Mr. Jacob Fry. At your service. Truer words were never spoken. If you'd be so kind as to take the reins. You must understand I've received threats against my pride. Malcolm Miller has all but waged war on me since Mr. Starrick brought out his company. And no offense, I hope, but you do look the killing type. I doubt I shall ever recover from such a slight. What then is your interest in my redemption, Mr. Fry? I sense an opportunity that will benefit us both. Do you? Is that so hard to believe? Whatever your intentions, it will be quite the time to strike back against Milner and Starrick. I have worked like a trick to make Atway transport. That's one of Milner's. Walk on, girl.
who's a good horse? Malcolm Milner. Starrick's puppet himself. Careful, you twats! This park scene needs to make it to the outway depot. He thinks he can burn my buses. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's give him the whole damn bottle. <laughs> we'll turn Milner's park scene against him. But I'll need help from my gang. Such entrepreneurial instinct, Mr. Fry. I shall leave you to it. Ho, Jacob. Primed and ready. See Milner's stock price plummeting already. You're hired. Oh, I have more business planned for us both. Drop a note to my secretary to make an appointment, and I shall reveal the next step in our scheme. I don't actually work. Like that.
Mr. Fry. I told you to make an appointment. My schedule was open. You're fortunate I like you. <laughs> Internal combustion engines. Eight small syllables that mean a great deal of money. The engines will be delivered to Milner by train. Secure them for me, and he will be... devastated. Mm. I'll need a second train to pull this off. And I think I know just the man. So we have a deal, Mr. Fry? You're fortunate I like you, Miss Attaway. So, what do you want, Fry? What makes you so sure I want something? Perhaps I saved you out of the kindness of my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let me tell you about the job. Milner's pulling a lot of cargo there. Just be sure to make the transfer. Give him help.
Here we go. The internal combustion engine. The end of horse-drawn transport. <laughs> it's like gazing into the future. And what is the going rate for the future, do you think? Uh, we're not selling them. You're giving them to your contact? You'd be paid all the same. <laughs> Who is this Pearl, anyway? How long have you been working with her? She's a business partner. That's all you need to know. Jings, I hope I didn't make it too la -de da Slap some gold leaf here and there. I gave the wood a splash of shellac. I've holstered the lot. And how do you like the lampshades? Jacob, darling, do join me. To our fruitful partnership. And to the shiny new engines now in my possession. Back to business. Milne has fled to the Thames, occupied with securing his ferry. It's all he has left. Hmm, protecting it with his life, no doubt. The very thing I want you to take. <laughs> Just kill him. That's not your first glass of champagne, is it? Success is more intoxicating than alcohol, Mr. Fry. Then save a glass for me. Now, what would it take to draw out Starrick's pawn? The sight of his fairies in flames, perhaps.
now it's a sink Milner's Enterprise. Attaway led me to you, not Staric. Then they were gonna give her again. I should never have come between Mr. Staric and Miss Attaway. Family always stay together in the end. 
What do you mean, their family? Time for Pearl and I to have a real conversation. What are you up to now, Pearl? He knew that I belonged to the Order and was there to end me. Imagine my delight when he told me his true purpose. An assassin helping the Templar cause. Isn't that delicious? It's sickening. It's business, cousin. Look at the big picture. With Milner gone, I own the only omnibus company. You glower too much, cousin. You will get your engines back. Our new motorized buses will bring us both... A lot of money. I'll need to arrange proper transport for the engines to get back to my factory. I want you at Waterloo, personally, to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Of course. May the Father of Understanding guide us. Today and in all of our future endeavors, cousin. Waterloo Station. Doors jammed. Again? Just give it a shove. Someone take me! Oh, get getting bored. There he is! Shoot it now!
would like to thank our esteemed guests. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time. Follow me around asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company. And Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Well, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. It'll be ever more pleasant for your absence. This looks familiar.
It's in the very top. The key to the vault, and the shroud. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You want the shroud to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin. To hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. <laughs> Miss Fry, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Clara. I was just going to check on Lambeth since the asylum's closing. What brings you here? The children in my care have been fallen ill. Our usual tonics aren't working. A cane, too. <laughs> Are you certain you're feeling all right? Of course. I am, Miss. Clara! Is there a doctor nearby? Bring her inside. She simply collapsed? Yes, she said the others took tonic, but it didn't work. I should think not. 
Ever since Elliotson was murdered, the district has been overrun with counterfeit tonics. <laughs> this one needs proper care. But without the appropriate medication, she and the others will quickly decline. What do you need? I need supplies. Plenty of them. And medicine. Some of the less common ingredients are being stolen and sold at auction. I'd be happy to help. Here's the list. Miss Fry. Evie Fry. I'm Miss Nightingale. How do you do? Please hurry. We don't have much time. I can't thank you enough. These supplies are meant for Miss Nightingale. I'm here to collect them. And they're already loaded on the cart. Please take them. Giddy up! You mean that cart? Yes. Of course it is. Please be careful. Some of those items are fragile. There you are. 
you go. Gotta go. Not a moment too soon. I hope you brought the medication I requested. How is she? She will recover. Papillonelli, the children. Thanks to you, we can distribute authentic medicine now. But is that a permanent solution? I will petition to have regulations put in place. Lambeth is in your debt. It takes a long time to change things. But I'm not going anywhere, Miss Fry. Jacob, Evie, it's you. Thank goodness. Experimenting, are we, Alec? Correct. And looking a bit frazzled. Nerves. It's those great oafs static keeps sending around to coax me. He is offering a ridiculous amount of money. Alec, you're not thinking of jumping ship, are you? Never. I've been working in something in case they get too insistent. Uh, it's meant to stun an assailant, should the need arise. Are you certain that it works? Uh, not as such. I've made three of them with varying degrees of acidity and whatnot. Oh, one must be the right formula. Let's find some Staric lackeys to target then, shall we? <laughs> Speaking of Staric, he is still transmitting false information. We could simply destroy his transmitters. His company's too well guarded. And the bombs will help, but it would be awkward to produce bombs that potentially do not stun. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like opportunity has come knocking. <laughs> Oh dear, they never looked so angry before. Stand clear, Alec. Let us instead play a little linguistic game with them. Um, take the bombs and climb onto the roof. Uh, when I see the name of uh, a fruit, toss one near the thugs. Right then. Oh, uh, oh wait, uh, I nearly forgot. Um, slip these into your boots and you will henceforth be immune to all voltaic discharge. I think.
gentlemen. Oh, I, I would ask you in for tea, but I'm afraid I'm running rather late. Enough of the nice teas. We've come to smash your place up, ain't we, Bess? You got one of them Tully what's it's in here, ain't ya? You? You've been reading messages from the Steric Company. That is as untrue as the notion that the Staric Telegraph Company is emitting impartial information, sir. Come again? Your employer's promises are nothing but hot air. His operations are about to turn pear-shaped. Smart Alex got a sense of humor. And... What you going on about air and pears for? Oh. I don't know, I feel rough! Oh, that's disgusting! Don't burn me! Oh, kids, huh? Those playful young scamps get everywhere. Listen up, Belle, or I'll thump you till your ears are ringing. Me. And to think I won, you had the mental agility of a dollar of donkey's apples. I'll have no more of your cheek, boy. Say that again, and I'll give you a face like a soft ass. You're gonna feel my fist at the back of your throat. Every self-respecting gardener likes donkey apples. Even housewives run out to sweep up donkey apples! <laughs> they want wonders for the roses, you know! Donkey apples! Apples? I think he's trying to be funny. Whoa! You dropped another one, Bill. You little sod. Well, I ain't me, Bez. Oh, oh, go blind me, it's got my throat. Oh, oh, those rascals throwing stink bombs again. It happens all the time around here. Right. Tell us where you keep that telly what's it. I'll count to three. Three? Well, well. Let's see how far you get. One. Do you really think I would keep it here? Do you see a cable? A telegraph without a cable is about as useful as a bell without a clapper. I'll give you a bleeding clapper. Well, bless my boots. You're as purple as a plum. <laughs> Alec. Thanks to you, Evie. Your mere presence gave me courage and resolve I never knew I had. I'm glad I could help. Now it's time to shut down Stark's empire of propaganda. The longer we can keep Staric from spewing out false information, the more we can awaken the people with the truth about his operations. I agree. The sooner we can get there, the quicker we can act.
Would you believe my mother says there are still some waves in her street that swear by that suit himself? So I took it upon myself to tell her neighbors the truth about the obnoxious draft. That's good, Alec. But you can't go round to every household in London town. No, I wasn't always welcome. It shows how false information can be as difficult to stamp out as fishwives' profanities at Billings Gate. Or vermin at Smithfield. But if we can eradicate the source that continually feeds such detrimental trash, then little by little the truth will take the upper hand and the sham will be flushed out. That's why we're here. We will have to get in without being detected, mind. I shall stand them while you get inside. I shall destroy not one, but three parts of the transmitter. He'll be as good as dancing before a public toilet without a penny. Whoa! Bugger. We'll have to cross over here. I see. This is becoming rather perilous, to say the least. Fiddly that one, but I've pulled it as well as a dentist pulls a rotten tooth. There. Move faster if you can. Oh. I see. This is becoming rather perilous, to say the least. My dears, Jacob, Evie, thanks are once again in order for supporting what is most dear to me and to our cause, freedom of speech. It's a blessing that you employ your genius for the common good, Alec. However, I suggest you vacate your workshop. No need. Not now you've given me sacks full of courage. And besides, what with my little devices, I have all the protection I need. Uh, should you find yourselves with a moment to spare, do drop by. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hey! 
slowly. The engine just pulled into Waterloo. Once Stark's men arrive, they're gonna unload the train. Well, not if the train has already left. Assemble a team at Charing Cross. I'll send the engines there for you to recover. Central station's closed. Attaway's orders. You saw these blueprints, did you not? Were you aware of this flaw? It's only a minor weakness, sir. The final wagon's otherwise 45. It's usually punctual. What could be causing this... I don't like the look of these assholes. What a shame. Good partnerships are hard to come by. Ours is most certainly dissolved. It's business, Mr. Fry. One does what one must to come out on top. Crawford will not take the news of my death lightly. He can be... unpleasant when he's cross. I have sacrificed so much. I don't want to lose my buses.
When coldness or deceit shall slight the beauty now they prize, and deem it but a faded light which beams within your eyes, when hollow hearts must wear a Mr. Starrick. I told you not to disturb me! To break your own to see Such a moment I but ask That you remember me that you remember me Crawford a luster stripped by the hands of that savage he must be brought to justice Pearl would not want justice Pearl would want vengeance Your passion is most welcome, Miss Thorne. But we cannot let our emotions disrupt the lawful structures of society. If we do that, the enemy wins. It shall happen in the shadows. Miss Fry will hang from the gallows. And I will flay her brother as he comes to save her. I suppose it must be done. Take no chances. Increase the Templar presence in London. We alone protect this city of light. Yes, Crawford. And then we shall enter the vault and cast aside the shadows together. What have we here? Boiler, this dredge character's meddling will be the death of us. 
He was loitering around the exchange today, asking far too many questions about the bank. Should he discover my plan, you will face a far worse fate than losing your job. Signed, Plutus. So this Plutus is Starag's banker, hmm? I wager Dredge will lead me to him. While you're out and about, do attempt not to destroy modern medicine or the London Transportation Network. Don't make me laugh. Innocent lives hang in the balance. They depend on this city. I'm not the one who let Lucy Thorne walk away. A mistake I intend to rectify immediately. I've been looking for you. Hmm. What good is a key if you don't know what lock it opens? I dare say Miss Thorne is in the same predicament. Henry! Mr. Green, here, this is it. This matches a casket owned by the Queen, kept in the Tower of London. It's a fortress. I don't suppose you have any friends there? A guardsman? If you can find him once you're inside. I'll talk to you again when I have the shroud. Thank you for your help. Right, yes. Well, good luck, Evie. Lots of guards, predictable patrol routes. Thorn may already be inside. Better stick to the shadows. chest that matches the key. Find it and bring it to me. Halt! Escort to the keys. Halt! Who comes there? The keys! Whose keys? Queen Victoria's keys. First, Queen Victoria's keys, and all's well. You're not with the Royal Guard. How many of you are there? Tell me. Let me go. This is treason. Just you wait until I get out. There'll be hell to pay. I have 
your crimes. You're one of Green's friends, aren't you? Thank heavens you've come. That Thorn woman has Templars everywhere, disguised as guards. I think I could pass as one of them long enough to sneak you inside, except the guards out here already know my face. You need to deal with them first. Meet me by the White Tower when you're ready. Someone's breaking <laughs> I wish they'd just knocked the constable out. I know. Ah, is, is someone out there? Yes. A friend. Oh, that's good. Say, friend, could you get me out? Guards ran off with the keys. This investigation is hopeless. The girl! She's an intruder! This is the end for you! Please. You again! Ah! Thank you. It's treason is what it is, and desecration of the chapel. Miss Thorne told me to be grateful they didn't kill me outright. The nerve. She's after an object of great power. She cannot be allowed to steal it. Not the crown jewels. Something much more important. We must stop her. I still have men loyal to me. I'll rally them. Yeah.
That's all for the men out here. What's next? Miss Thorne wants me captured. If she sees me in chains, she might let her guard down. Can you make it look convincing? You mean pretend like you're my prisoner? I'll do my best, ma'am. If we get too close, those Templars might realize I'm not one of theirs. Then let's keep our distance. I found her wandering inside the walls, ma'am. Thought you'd want to speak with her. Welcome, Miss Fry. Do you care to tell me where the shroud is? As you wish. I shall find it without your help. And then I'll strangle you with it. Watch her closely. You have murdered me after all. But what good will that do you? The shroud isn't here. You sought a tool of healing in order to extend your own power. Not mine. Ours. You are so short-sighted. You'd hoard power and never use it, when we would better the condition of humanity. I hope you never find the shroud. You have no idea what it truly can do. Tell me then. No. I need to sound the alarm. You'd best get yourself away before I do. I'll hold off as long as I can. Take this down, then I want it sealed until you receive further orders. Miss Thorne. You supplied me with the means to secure London's future. The city thanks you. The order thanks you. I thank you. But the shroud can only be worn by one. 
Therefore, I hereby dissolve this partnership. I promise to endow you with an income into your old age. That is the most I can do. May the father of understanding guide you. Yes, what is it? Miss Thorne, sir. What of her? I'm sorry, sir. She is dead. And the key? Where is the key? There was no key found on her body, sir. Even if I have to raise hellfire to do it. Burn the letter. I will not build a single bus for you criminals. Oh, you'll do as we say, Bailey. Or we're gonna have to pay you and your family a visit. You leave them be. in the street. There you are. Take deep breaths. They're gone. No, not for long. That's Still it. hurt my kids. They'll... 
I sent Ross's men a message. You and your family are safe. Oh, you are blooming brilliant. The founding members of the London General Omnibus Company. Good moral men. All of them. We'll have buses rolling before you know it. Thank you, Miss Fry. My pleasure.
I'll take one. Here you go, sir. I say we stop this goodwill towards strangers nonsense and focus on what London really needs. Solid leadership, whose hard work will raise everyone up to success. As go the titans of business, so goes the world. <coughs> oi, oi! <coughs> you weak fool. Get a job! Best guards money can buy won't do Mr. Dredge any good. <laughs> what news you got? More than Bobby's it. choked off a group of protesters in Hyde Park. Press where between you speak. <laughs> up the wrong tree, sir. Stupid pillock! Come I'll on. have you... Jacob, it's me, Sergeant Frederick Appeline. Freddy. Sergeant. Undercover. There's to be a robbery at the Bank of England, I'm sure of it. Robbery? It's a fortress. Mm, the boys at the station thought I was joking. Wouldn't be so funny if it was their life savings. Who's behind it? That's confidential. Oh, come on, Freddy. I can help you. Imagine the headlines. Thieves caught in the act. Abilene Wright all along. Well, I suppose I can fill you in a little. Every fiscal quarter, 
A branch of the bank is robbed. Never the same branch. The thieves are supplied by... Cockham merchants. Thanks for the info, Freddy. It's Sergeant! And I, I, I'm keeping my eye on you. If only I knew which shipment it was, and I could trace the weapons to their owner. Capital idea, Freddy. Here we are, the shipping docks. Now, where are the Cockham crates intended for Mr. Plutus? <laughs> what couldn't off do if a cup I seen all them tea crates? Ha! Guns and tea. I'd rather have guns and ale. But anyone would think we're having a giant tea party. Got 
tea. Maybe later. What's he doing here? Where the devil is it? Hello. Crazy, isn't it? Anyone would think. And we now to wait for the crates to be retrieved. That's just it. In madness. Heads up! It's a shame I can't stop in for a pint. They're nervous. I should keep my distance. My dear sister thinks I'm destroying things. I'll show her how I settle accounts.
Templars. Ah, yes. Lead me to Mr. Plutus. Walk on, girl. Let's go. That's a girl. Doing fine, girl. Keep moving. Steady on. Who's a good horse? You are. Walk on, girl. That's the way. Easy, girl. Easy. Let's go. The weapons are here. Same routine as before. The twopenny opens a vault, we robs it, and leaves the money in his storehouse. Look sharp, the boys are waiting. To the Bank of England. Yeah. Plutus is twopenny. Well, what say you? You're not gonna like it. Now, see here. 
I am graced with the Aberline family's robust constitution. Two pennies rob in the Bank of England. <coughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably deep in the vault by now. However you get in, I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress, guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. And, oh yes, one man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupiny well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupiny is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him. No big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium. In disguise. Tupiny won't be leaving that vault. Fitting for two pennies, two. You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. 
Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as they would. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. for the path of the dead. Steady on. Murder! Murder! Thank goodness, the police! We're saved! Arrest them all oh. for robbing the people oh. of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice. The currency, a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffooned Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. About the same as Disraeli would offer for your balls, I'd wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other, when we can have it all? What say you, sir? <laughs> Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern. Again! Understood? You may see yourself out.
Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Starrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Huh? Well, certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. No more exploitation! No more Follow me. Wages. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avaline, 
If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Aberline. I have the utmost faith in you, Miss Fry. to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. Oh, heard about the rioting at the bank. They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Since we've got the printing plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. Here now. Keep this place locked down. Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. Absolutely, sir. Now to sneak these back into the bank.
There, as if they were never taken. London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. Oh. 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 
you are. Tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lucithorn's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847? The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault? Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie, certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will be back on the train. Be careful. not them.
I'll come over there and beat you bloody. <laughs> No. We have a problem. She's not out of my sight. Found you. Nothing here. Looks like I have to ask someone where the plans are. She won't get away again. Miss, oh, I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man, dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans, the mission. some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like.
That cart's been run off the road. They must be driving yeah. quickly. around here today all kinds of unsavory types wandering around armed to the teeth i don't like it one bit saw them dragging uh. someone out of the carriage after the wheel fell off. They said he hit his head. Not sure why they needed to take him to the church, but that's where they went. I could have sworn I'd locked this gate. This is supposed to be locked. Bloody urchins opened it again, no doubt. Yes, they pulled someone out of that carriage. Dead drunk he was. They carried him into the churchyard. Maybe he wanted a quiet place to sleep at all. you there? You're <laughs>
his brain. Oh. Evie, um, they sent someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Did they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost. Just concentrate on escaping, please. and feed you to me dogs. The board will have me aired if we're short. Get Miss Nightingale to look at that. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. Girl. Come 
Who are you and what's your game? If it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so without you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, you what a fool! You won't get away with it. I'll not stand idle by and watch you drag parliamentary privileges through the muck. That is precisely the word that I used to describe it in the sir. Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody Stuarts. How? Dead, I'm sir. certain it I'm would provide a much I do not wish to see government round. placed in the hands of judges. You would make these slanderous accusations. I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir.
be, I presume. Pleasure to meet you, B. B. My name's Herbert. And why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir. Some old bloke payment. Smug bastard. Bloody hell! Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lights are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Uh, uh, Perfect. Uh, On, girl. That's a girl. Doing fine, girl. Steady on.
so much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. Are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. If you excuse me a moment. all this not so fast your excellency about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough-and-ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's 
Ica. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, 8 o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. Ha, 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 ha. I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. That's yours, if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Blimey! Look! It's Squire Bancroft! Best lead them astray before they tear me to shreds. Good boss. You are. Keep moving. Well, we haven't got. <laughs> oh, what a rough place. Give me your arm, Mr. Fry. Let us see what the Devil's Acre has to offer.
your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Or cats. Is a, oh, what was it? Yes, a costermonger, <laughs> of all things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? Gracious! I, I do believe we're being accused. Oh, God, stop me! Taking employment as a parliamentary whip. Ah, I can't believe me peepers. Murder. I saw the vicar says, Your pardon, Bishop. I thought that was the Eucharist. Mr. Fry, shall we press on? Is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company, but another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are, the old one ton. So, this is a pint, is it? <laughs> Remarkable. Nice doggy. Mm. Desmond, hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I have just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. 
Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Steady on. Well, I must say, you were a most energetic and enlightening evening, Mr. Fry. No, thank you, madam. Perhaps now you might tell me about the man in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman you seek. Tiresome. Oh. Always laughing on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, campaigning against the corrupt practices bill. Let's go. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Oh, do be careful. The government could ill afford another scandal. I assure you, I'll be very discreet. On, girl. That's a girl. Your stop, madam. My stop. <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. Who's a good boss? You are.
What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law.
Let me help you. Go and see what that strange noise was. You're going to get out of my sight! <laughs> Word. Balaclava. Come in. Oh. Ah, Minister Hacker. One moment. Dashed paperwork will be the death of us, what? Give me a stout horse and a saber, and I'd have this government running as smoothly as Henley Regatta. Hmm? But needs must and all that. Let's see. Ah, sign here. An initial, initial, and done. Should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Go. Yeah. 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 Keep moving. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him 
like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend, put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otso Berg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. A dinner invitation. And with whom are you dining this evening? Maxwell Roth. The leader of the Blighters? You're not going. Of course not. to check the back. I'm here to see Mr. Roth. Weapons? No, thank you. I've got my home. You should be on the stage, sir. This way. Has arrived. Come, sit. I've had my eye on you for some time. I find your heroics in battle in the great Crawford Steric quite magnificent. I've been picking off your soldiers one by one. Doesn't that make you angry? On the contrary, surprise is a spice of life. Now, Mr. Steric 
That's a different story. I'm drowning in directives, all terribly boring. Let's say we work together and bring him down. <sighs> I'm not so sure about that. My friend, if I fail to provide you with the chance to cause Staric some pain, well, you can charge into this theater and kill me yourself. What do you get out of all this? The chance to have a little fun with the bravest man in London. <laughs> you have a deal. <laughs> Lewis, my carriage. Shall we? This way. Well, you don't expect me to go alone, do you? Take the reins. Driver, to St. Pancras. And don't spare the horses. I thought you and Staric would be fighting for the same ends. What happened? Ah, oh, you know. He required my services to train his gang leaders. But the man is dreadful. You don't say. Freedom, Jacob. Stealing that is far more than a sin. It denies us our humanity. Right you are. And St. Pancras will ease our suffering? The station contains a large shipment of explosives to be dispatched to Staric and Co. And you intend to steal it? What? <laughs> There's a train parked inside St. Pancras. Then I'm to do away with Staric's merchandise, leaving chaos in my wake? Why not, Jacob? Why not? As we speak, the up train is headed towards us. That may help you enter the station unseen. As long as it remains on the tracks. I'd say good luck, but you don't need it. I shall make certain any reinforcements from Staric are kept away from the station. Want any broken bones tonight? Watch nothing spills. Finally, we can take out those bloody fry twins. Get a move on. We haven't got much time to get this shipment sorted. What's he doing here? What are you doing? The crazy crow boy is here. Do you see him? When I find you, I'll string you up like a pheasant. Oh, goodness. Watch for the roof, boy. <laughs> 
someday you blighters will understand that I'm doing this for your own good. It's up! Stop we have an intrusion! You go on this wall! Two down. Be ashamed to stop now. We'd have been better off if we had these explosives months ago. That's a fact. <sighs> Our brother is dead because of a rock attack. <laughs> One shipment left. Now to find somebody to drive this hunk of metal. Hush now, please. Do be quiet, sir. No need to make a fuss. What do you want from me? I just need you to keep the engine stoked. All right, I'll help you. Don't hurt me. Think of me as another passenger. I just happen to have a rather large blade pointed at your back. Didn't go as planned. Better find someone else. Did too much noise. I'll need to keep a low profile.
So kind as to get it some steam. will be on his knees in no time. My hat is off to you. Apologies, I must run. Do come see me again. Beautiful, isn't he? <laughs> I planned a perfect second out in Forest. Have you? There's borrowing to be done. Three of Starrick's henchmen are about to disappear. Oh, you sly devil. Oh, and I'm coming along this time. There is no sense in giving you all the glory. Off to my carriage we go, Lewis! Fools and hysteric have built their own prisons. It's a dreadful waste. They could be building gangs instead. No, no. Why build when you can ebb and flow like the sea? I would not aim to pin them down. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? What about your bird? 
It's not building anything. Did you? I dare say I shall never tire of the National Gallery. Why does Starrick interest himself with art? He's hired a fiendishly talented woman, one Hattie Cadwallader, to procure works for him. She has excellent taste. We're kidnapping her for the sin of being Starrick's collector. Oh, my dear, no. We are... Bring your carriage around and wait for the cargo. I shan't be very long. I'm looking for Miss Hattie Cadwallader. Ain't seen Someone her. around here must know Miss Hattie to, Cadwallader. Though. And what's that? Friggin' art, sir. She pinched a statue not far from here. The statue must be around here somewhere. With this being an island and all. That's why I do so enjoy the continent. Far more thrive. It excites the senses, I tell you. Now, where is that statue? Do hey, Smalley! Know anything much. about what happened here? I saw he pinched it, sir. Miss Cadwallader? Shards down the sewers, sir. Now, where is that statue? Of course it's sewers. <laughs> Why the bloody sewers? Tired of these working conditions. Wasn't Starrick who sent me? Then who? Maxwell Roth sent his regards. the Alhambra. I look forward to it. Every good criminal needs a place to invest his ill-gotten gains. And what's better than distracting the world with a little light entertainment while you do so? Oh, come now. You can't tell me you don't enjoy the triumph of a well-received play. The plaudits and praise, the reviews. I enjoy being entertained, Jacob. If one of the productions please Ah, the park. The dwelling place of Starrick's head of security, one Benjamin Raffles. Those who cross him tend to disappear without warning. Sounds like we'll be fast friends. Be careful. His guards are never far away. Walk on, girl. Easy now. Any last words? 
Said you, the villain. You have your villains mixed up, Mr. Raffles. The man you work for is the real villain here. What's that over there? My most fragrant Raffles. How very good to see you again. Gotta well, Roth. Who is this lyricist that works for you, you then? Ha! A bit of an odd fish, isn't it? Came to be a few years past. He's very solemn. But always so polite. And he has many other talents. Who am I looking for? Just a swine boy. A copper by day and a snitch by night. Remove him. Must be good at what he does to keep the charade going for so long. Fine girl. All these bobbies give me goose flesh. <laughs> Welcome to Scotland Yard. Now, now, Swineborn. Let's not make a scene. You're not going to get away with this. Oh, but I am. Where are you taking me? A friend would like to say a quick how do you do.
steady on. Easy now. Excellent work. Do come find me at the Elabra. I have more amusements planned for us. This way, my dear. I've something to show you. <sighs> Hop in. Where are we going? One of Starek's workshops, where they build weapons for his army. <laughs> when the world is full of nasty things, we must tear those things apart. Like Starrick built a world around his own desires. In you. you must see the potential, dear Jacob. This workshop is one of Sterics. Set the dynamite and let's blow it to atoms. Together. That's one. There. Someone's here!
All rigged up. Perfect! Let's put our plan into action. Stand back! Ready! Wait! Whatever for? There are children in there. <laughs> Jacob, my dear. Starrick uses child labor to manufacture goods. We must put an end to his production line. But not like this. Why not? I can do whatever I damn well please. Soon you will understand what it is to be free, as I am. Light him up, boys! No! What the hell are you doing? We're not playing games anymore, Roth. No. We're not. Out you get! Move quickly! No time to idle! A gift, sir, from Mr. Roth. You should be warned, Mr. Fry, that when Roth is angry with one, he generally brings suffering to many. My dearest Jacob, alas, it seems our adventures together have come to a close. Although our time together was brief, it's left a lasting mark. I wish you well in all your future endeavors. Cordially, Maxwell. Post scriptum. I'm putting on a show this evening. All of London will be there. Enclosed, please find your invitation.
It's a very odd title, my dear. I will escort Nena Seven to the theatre for tonight's performance. Everyone ready? Then let's proceed. Madame and Monsieur, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alhambra Music Hall. Tonight, we have for one night only, a very special performance of Corvus the Trickster. While some of the effects may be visceral and highly disturbing, do not be alarmed, my good people. Fear not, this is a purest form of entertainment. Tonight's performance immortalizes and is for the benefit of a young fellow very near and dear to my heart. Any concerns or complaints may be addressed to him. <laughs> Jacob, dear boy, tonight is for you. Things are fine the way they are. Go on, you're embarrassing me. I'll be serving you this evening, gentlemen. You're still here, love. Last time, I swear, you nearly poisoned us. Scene two, stand by. placed around his head. Exciting, is it not? <laughs> Will our honored guest go unharmed? We British are a hardy bunch. Let's put that hardiness to the test. It's all part of the show. Please stay with us as we prepare for the last turn. Oh Are your principles things, dear? Oh, shit, oh. 
Leaves a strange taste in your mouth, doesn't it? Like eating pork when expecting venison. But I assure you that is the case. I have no doubt that you can hazard a guess as to what this one can Our courageous participant has an even flinch. What's he doing here? Standing a few feet away, our performer expertly throws his knives at the enemy, slicing it in two. Show yourself! <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed your evening so far, ladies and gentlemen. I know I have. Now, before our final act, I would like to toast all you brave people who joined us tonight to celebrate life and death. Go on, toast them! <laughs> Your move, Jacob, my dear! Burn! 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 Baby crow's neck between my thumb and forefinger. Slice to bits the ones you deem innocent. Keep the world in its divine, manic state. For the same reason, I do anything. Why not?
damn this place from hell to Hackney. I'll never make it out alive. has bred disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupinay has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudenell Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It's up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters. Barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. prevent a return of the Dark Ages. I will start anew. London must be reborn. The Peace of Eden is under Buckingham Palace. We've got all we need. Let's start planning our infiltration. Hold on, better to get visual verification. If we're going to move, we need to be 100% sure. We'll only get one shot before Otso Bird crashes down on us. Gotta agree with Sean. We'll position ourselves near the palace, but we'll wait for you to sync the genetic data before we move. It's all up to you, Initiate. You're late. Staric is making his move. The Peace of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. I've been killing Staric's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you quote father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry, this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right, he never approved of your methods! Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Staric plans to steal the Peace of Eden, and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more, for all time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. What? 
Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you'd be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills to commandeer their cards. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother, dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. Treating me like a child. Now, where can they be? The ball is tonight. They must have taken the invitations with them. You wouldn't happen to have seen two carriages pass by here just now? I did, sir. One with a man in it. The other with a woman. They split up. Where did the man go? That way. Thank you. <laughs> Steady on. Who's a good horse? You are. Let's go. A private party event. Don't mind if I do. Your eyes peeled for any enters. Oh! <laughs> 
Maybe I haven't been quite as delicate as I could have been, but still. Gladstone's under guard. Better be cautious. Better wait until she's alone. Now is my chance. One should not attend the Queen's ball without making a proper entrance. Get him! Break it up now! What's that? Be <laughs> You'll be very sorry when I get hold of you! This part of town is like right to the door. Sunshine, Who's a good horse? You are. Yeah! <laughs> Steady on. <laughs> now for the invitations. What's this? Swords must be left at the door by order of the Queen. Freddy will know what to do.
quite a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes, and your face, voice, and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you, only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? Too easy. For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach. Of course. Charming. Now to hide the body.
ready? Here I come. One uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic. Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One must be when one is so often underestimated. Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. What a mistake.
Miss Climb up, Your Highness. Where are we headed? Belgrave Square. Not about embracing the unexpected. I shall take but a few moments of your time. A matter of utmost importance must be discussed. When the Commonwealth seized the Punjab from my people, it was not a seizure, but a rightful transaction. Britain promised to protect me. By robbing me of my kingdom, Parliament acted in violation of the treaty signed with my family. Here, read it. I... I was not aware. Read. That is all I ask. You are one of the few in a position to help. I will do what I can. I trust you and your son will enjoy the ball this evening. He is newly returned from Delhi. I will share what we have discussed. It is most disconcerting. That proved quite valuable. Where to now? St. James's Park. I noticed Mr. Green did not accompany you. He has other things to attend to. Ah, a pity. You two seem to get along nicely. Well, that was a problem, you see. One must not allow our personal feelings to compromise one's mission. That sounds like a quotation. It is. From my father. Ethan Fry. You knew him? No, unfortunately. But Mr. Green spoke of him. He sounded like an extraordinary man. He was, Your Highness. And your mother as well, Cecily Fry. She and your father were partners, inseparable. The only duo that came close to challenging Mr. Starrick. And very much in love, at least from the small amount I have been told. Cecily. I wish I could have met her. From what Mr. Green gathered, you share much in common. Your intelligence, for one. Father never spoke of her. What would Mr. Green do? He was only a boy when he trained with my father. Children can be quite perceptive, Miss Fry. To Parliament, please. On the double. Yes, sir. Good day, sir. Why, what are you doing here, Your Highness? <laughs> I know how busy your days have been of late. A few moments of your time is all I require. This is all rather unorthodox, but continue. Britain was to protect me according to the treaty my family signed. Instead, she took my land. And now I hear Britain intends to strengthen her ties to India. Perhaps it is time to return the Punjab to her people. The Queen has supplied you with an annual income for God knows how long, and now you bite the hand that feeds you? It is not a matter of money. I cannot stand idle and watch my homeland subjected to the yoke of an outsider's rule. My people are treated as slaves. I will die poor a thousand times over if only to see them free. Your passion moves me, Your Highness. What would you have me do? Take this copy of the wrongful treaty and defend my claim to the throne. Help disengage the Punjab from British rule. Good day, sir. May God bless you. Only one more remains to the Gladstone residence. Do you miss India? I remember. 
that my mother smelled of cinnamon. And when she cradled me in her arms in the summer heat, I would hold so still that she fell asleep. When I lost my kingdom, it hurt. For truly, when they took my mother away, I saw her again two years. Good day, Mr. Gladstone. Mr. Singh! You are a hard man to pin down. I know what this is about. Your politics have worn off. Her Majesty has tired of you. So now you come begging for scraps. You wound me deeply, sir. My people deserve freedom. I am here to fight for them. Why did you lose the Punjab? I shall tell you, your highness. You were outgunned, outmaneuvered, and simply outclassed. Yes, the Sikhs deserve freedom. I hope with British help and progress, they shall achieve it. Then why do they cry out for their king? Britain has a duty to bring about peace. It is an enormous responsibility. And I value your guidance and advice, along with that of Parliament. But it's our burden to rule India and certainly not the duty of a forgotten leader who has not seen his country for 20 years. I apologize for being so frank, but one must not tell lies to a king. Your honesty is most enlightening. When I become Prime Minister, I intend to push for peace, but it will be a long and slow process. And I am afraid I can almost guarantee you will never see India again. It's much luck, Your Highness, with your lobbying. I hope my advice has done some good. Far more than your policies thus far. But I hold out hope that you will make progress. My people are counting on it. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Gladstone's vitriol. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad. Broken, even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us, cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening, Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. Miss Fry, nice to see you. Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. 
We must enter an armed. Go on in, sir, sir madam. Without cards. Dear man, I am soon to become a prime minister. What in the blazes is our carriage doing here? Did I hear something? No, just the voices in your own head. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than yours. Charming. Aren't I? I shall go and find the piece of Eden. As you wish. I'm off to meet Freddy. The plans are located in the white drawing room, which is most likely locked. The captain of the guard will have a key. Closed, and this will be over before you know it. Who are you? That hurts. My arm. Gentle. My dear are. fellow, that's rot. Take a look around you. My arm. What's that you said? That's not to say you both have bad names. The lady is with me. Much obliged. Madam? Gentle. My arm. Gentle. Gentle. That hurts. That hurts. Lead by example, I say, and you'll gain the trust. That hurts. Pleasant dreams. The plans are somewhere nearby. Now for the vault.
Scream and it'll be your last. Jacob's most likely off stealing another carriage somewhere, or accidentally pushing the Queen down a flight of stairs. someone I'm simply dying for you to meet. Uh, do, 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 come with me. <laughs> Your Majesty, may I present Miss uh, Evie Fry? The one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry, may I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun. But the game is over. Uh, uh. Listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. We may make mistakes while dancing, but the mazurka ends, and then we begin again. Problem is, Everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, then he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. And mine begins. It's really as simple as that. Shouldn't you be? Well, why would I tell anyone? I know. Oh, I'm gonna keep an eye on him. This will just go on.
Freddy. Staric peppered the regulars with his own men and took several guards hostage. Your weapons are in there. Look. Right. I'll kill the imposters and rescue the captives. How? It's impossible to tell the difference. Oh, ye of little faith. Now to find the real royal guards. Hold still for a moment. You have my thanks. tricks on me.
I'll get you out. Thank you, sir. Thanks, mate. Yes. The key to the waltz is one must lead with one's right foot. Oh, my! Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault. Go! Just like that? No plan? No time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. Exploiting, I warn you, my boy, but you do not listen. Requiem's cart and pace. Some sort of scuffle over there. This is no place for you. That looks like a mess. I, there's some sort of scuffle over there. Should I be concerned? I'll please you try.
London. The shroud was never meant for you. Me rectify my mistake. Another prize. I will begin again. And I admire I'm closer, my <laughs> Shall we? Let's. London will perish without me. 
You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order! You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were. Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry is stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry! It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Uh, do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abilene, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Abilene informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil? I invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abilene implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abilene tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry? Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs> Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on.
That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the Shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Contact! Cover me! That skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want him to bleed. Matters. Understood. Sean! Galena, we need an exit. Our targets are righteous. We need to go. Now! Understood. Shroud! Forget the bloody shroud. Stay with me, Bex. Please. We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the Shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud gonna help you create a new clone? It's not. And the shroud is wrapped around the body. It scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. <laughs> 